All right, so where we left off, we had just finished saving our color type. And we got our color type only after building all the different aspects I try this the red of our poster. And rejecting some like the sloppy border and embracing others. Ooh, I like that. Having the 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 uh, the black type with the thicker stroke behind my color type with the thinner stroke, but still have the drop shadow. That gives you kind of this stepped down stroke, which I'm kind of into. But that's probably a little cleaner without it. So anyway, so you, you view all these things. And then you can always question all these things. So I left the red coming through, and no, I don't like that. So back to this. So I think this is pretty strong. I can make little tweaks. Like, do I want a slightly thicker stroke? Oh, it's so hard to say. Maybe so. So let me... Remember, all of these are adjustable. So instead of nine pixels, did that change anything? <laughs> yeah, it did. OK. Yeah, I do like that better. Then you start looking at little things like, oh, now the A and the N are touching again. So maybe I want to space that out. Everything else looks good, though. So what can I do? Well, I can fix all of that, right? It's all full resolution and rastered. It's all based on the black type, just with layer styles. So all I have to do is nudge it a little bit over. So I'm doing it six nudges, and then I got to do the same to what's underneath it. Whoops. So lasso it first. So with type, you do have to sweat the details. Now I'm going to nudge it six spaces over. Yeah. And I do like that kind of secondary gradated stroke that you get. Okay, good. So now I'm pretty happy with my type. I'm pretty happy with my spot illustration. I'm pretty happy with the background and the border. If my poster is finished, I save it as my PSD file, and then I save it as a JPEG to put up to, to PhotoBucket, and I save it as a TIFF I flatten it and save it as a TIFF for myself to print. And then I would be all done, right? And I can send it to the printers and I'm great. But what if I want to play with it more? Well, let me save it as just a JPEG and put it up into PhotoBucket just so you can have a comparison. So I've already saved it as my PSD, so I'm going to save it as my JPEG. Remember, my name is part of my file type. Very important, especially because I don't get to see 
the work you're working on unless you put it up to PhotoBucket and label it correctly. And some of you have been sending me, you know, in the inbox, your works in progress, and that's great too. We can also do Zoom meetings. We can, you can do lots of ways to get input from me. So please don't be shy with those questions. Okay, so as soon as my JPEG, I think it's probably ready. Let's see. I can upload it. Maybe. There we go. All right. So now I want to talk about some of the crazier things that dealing with the history of print, uh, how we can deal with that digitally. And to me, this is some of the most fun stuff. And this is more printmaking stuff, doing it digitally. So even though I put a lot of different textures with dissolves, with texture overlays, with layer styles, so that this wasn't just flat digital color, right? Remember, we started with just flat digital color, kind of like the outline on this blood, but then we've really pushed it beyond that. In printmaking, there's a history of different methods for breaking up what you're looking at. And the most traditional for color printing is what's called halftone uh, separation. And you can see the different dots. And this has to do with printing with CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So I want to play a little bit with this and then add that into my final job and just see if I like it because it's the kind of thing I like a lot and you'll see it in a lot of my past work. So almost there. So what I would like you to do is to go to the class in Canvas go to the assignment sheet for assignment 8 so we scroll down to assignment sheets. And right underneath the assignment sheet for assignment eight is a set of slides on color separation. It's not on type design or anything like that. It's on CMYK color separation. So here are the slides on digital coloring. But if we now look at just these, this is content I want you to know. So think of these slides as your textbook. There, there will be some questions on the final about printing and color separation, because it's something I want you to know about. Even if you decide not to, to do what I'm gonna show you digitally that you can do, to mimic it. But this is how things are actually professionally printed on what's called a four color offset lithography press, which is how books are printed, posters are printed, CD covers, uh, you know, just everything that's on decent paper. And even color photos in a newspaper are printed the same way, just at a lower resolution. So CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are the four inks any color inkjet printer has. You can see them here that print on top of white paper to give you an optical mix of all the colors we can see. It's what we call these individual dots that the, the inks break into to mix different colors. We call them bin day dots. They're named after Benjamin Day. And it is a mechanical process rather than a manual process. But, but post-impressionist painters like Georges Seurat, Paul Signac, uh, did a painting technique that was similar to this manually that we call pointillism. So this is like mechanical pointillism. So what we do is we use small colored dots that are closely spaced or widely spaced and slightly overlapping in order to produce optical color effects. So there are two main ways that these bin day dots can be used. So one is called an indexed dither. So an indexed dither is what happens when you set a layer to dissolve and that's how you get the uh, the kind of what I call a sand pattern, like a randomized pattern of your pixels to break it up. But the mechanical way that's used in printing is what's called half toning. And half toning has that old retro kind of comic book look because it's so identified to printing. 
So to zoom in on this slide, there's a lot of information in these slides. In order to have halftone printing, it uses cyan, magenta, yellow, and black all layered on top of each other, but it has to do it at specific angles. And those angles give you what are called Gaussian roses that allow for you to have the full color mixing. So this image, which looks like it has thousands and thousands of colors in it, is actually just made of those four inks overlapped. So here we have it done digitally. So this is a modern digital coloring of an old, old illustration from the original Wonder Woman. But you can see digitally, they're separating those dots perfectly, but they look mechanical, right? But what's interesting here is all of these dots are at a 45 degree angle. And you'll see that because it's what's called a half drop pattern. Same thing here, this is a contemporary artist that's using, that's doing it digitally, but uses kind of letterpress textures like I like to use, and then uses half tone just for the skin. So uses it selectively. Here you see it used in the movie uh, Into the Spider-Verse, where they use the old kind of comic book half tones a lot as just a textural element, right? And here you see it used in a bunch of different textural ways. So this is what I want you to know that anything printed professionally in color is made up of these four inks, three of which are color, one of which is black, and that they have to have very set angles in order to actually look fully colored and dimensional. If they weren't angled like this, the dots would just print right on top of each other and they would all just look like a muddy brown. So there are a few variations on this, but the standard is this. Black is always at 45 degrees, which is the classic half drop pattern. So it looks like the dots are lining up horizontally and vertically, except like bricks in a wall, they're just offset by one half each time. And so what that really is, is a 45 degree angle where they're lined up. Why black always at 45 degrees? It's the most flattering angle. And and black is gonna give you all your gray values when it's broken up into half tones. The one that's the least flattering angle is the yellow. So that's done at 90 degrees, which just looks straight, you know, vertical and horizontal. But because yellow is the lightest value of the inks, it's the one we noticed least, right? So we keep that at 90. Then the others, cyan and magenta, those are 15% degrees, 15 degrees uh, apart from the yellow and 30 degrees apart from the black. So you end up with these halftone screen angles. So these are the halftone screen angles I want you to know. Black is always at 45. The others are always at least 15 degrees apart from each other and 30 degrees off of black. All right, here it is again, and then shown in context and you'll get these beautiful Gaussian roses. So if we keep moving through these slides, we'll see how we can apply it. So right now with our poster, just like we were with our spot illustration, we're pretty much finished with everything. We have offsets in our type, we have all kinds of stuff. The next step, if I zoom in, and you can download this handout under links and see it in really full resolution. But if I zoom in here, you can see that this is slightly different than this, and that's because this version has been separated into CMYK. And so you'll see those little tool marks of each of those Gaussian roses. Ah, we have some chats. So some good questions. What does the K stand for? So the K stands for black, and that's so it's not confused with blue, right? And C is what we would think of as blue, but it's actually cyan. It's a specific primary color blue. So C stands for cyan, M stands for magenta, yellow stands, or Y stands for yellow, K stands for black. So all this kind of specialized graphic communications lingo you'll have now that will uh, give you extra street cred in the digital art world. Okay. So those are all the slides. Now we're going to see it in practice.